YouTube is going. The Godals is back, and it's Bears Day. We are doing this for all 32 NFL teams, though. We have a playlist on the channel with the teams we have already done. The first comment on this video, the very first comment, will decide which team I do next. So what we're going over, a bit of a preview, what to watch, what we could expect, players to watch, games to watch, and, of course, some fans' takes. The Chicago Bears. I think they can be a sneaky team. We know this is a team built for the future, but they have potential to make some noise right now. There, there's some things that kind of have to fall in line for them. We're going to talk about it, but they could be a little sneaky right now. Number three on the, my list of what to watch is receiver and tight end usage and rotation, like how they use all these weapons. They, they kind of stacked it up a little bit. Uh, they had DJ Moore already, who's great. Uh, now they have Caleb Williams throwing to him, uh, which is also great. Keenan Allen, future Hall of Famer. They add him, Roma Dunze, who... I think we all love as a prospect out of Washington. Uh, and they have two pretty solid tight ends, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, uh, and they added some weapon, a weapon at running back, but besides the point here. So they have all these weapons, and that's great. I am very curious how they use them all, how they divide up the, the, the reps, the snaps, the rotation, what different looks they give. Shane Waldron, their new offense coordinator, come from coming from Seattle. He, for most of his career, almost all of his, he's been a big tight end guy, like actually, even though Seattle Seahawks had some weapons at receiver, they use you know a lot of two two tight end sets. They use Noah Fant, Will Disley a lot. They even use Kobe Parkinson who went who went to the Rams. Um, so and that was kind of a not really an issue for the offense, but it was an issue for rookie Jackson Smith and Jigba in Seattle because he had a lot of limited reps early on because there's just not enough snaps to go around in that type of offense with Metcalf and Lockett there. But at the end, they really increased the snaps, maybe a little bit different of looks uh, there. So it kind of brings up the question. What's Walzer going to do with this Bears offense and all these weapons? And they have this three. The the most talked about thing with the Bears, besides Caleb Williams, is the guy he, guys he's throwing to. DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen. Um, so I, I don't think we can expect all three of those guys to have 85% plus snaps. Like somebody's going to have a little bit of a dip in snaps compared to the rest. Maybe it's the rookie Roma Dunze. Um, you know, do they have Cole Komet and Gerald Everett on the field a ton? So I'm very curious to see how Waldron approaches this and the different snaps they give out, who's a little limited, but they have potential to be a really tough game plan with this because they can really mix it up. Like at times, at one game you can maybe focus on, yeah, having two tight ends out there. One game you focus on having DJ Moore outside on one side, a Dunes outside on the other side, Keenan Allen in the slot, uh, all at the same time. Maybe you're mixing up by game. Maybe you're mixing up a ton during during games, and it can really throw teams off. So they have potential to be very, very creative with this group and what Shane Waldron, what he's done, and what he kind of geared toward towards the end of last year. So that is something I'm really curious about, really keeping an eye on there. Um, hopefully they do it right. Hopefully they mix it up a bit. I'd imagine DJ Moore gets the most snaps out of all of them, out of all those weapons. There's some some people out there talking like, well, Moore was great last year. Does he get like a little bit of a dip in production? Because you got to get the ball to Keenan Allen. You got to get the ball to Roma Dunze, the tight ends. I, if you, I don't know if a lot of people think that, but if I've heard it. If people, I'm, I'm going to disagree with that. I could be wrong. Maybe Keenan Allen just. It's gonna be weird to see him away from the Chargers, by the way. But uh, outside of a Chargers uniform, but and I think he'll be fantastic. But and there's a chance Keenan Allen could lead this team. But I think DJ Moore is gonna be a monster this year. He really impressed me last year, and they were a little limited in the passing game. Keep in mind, at the same time, I think it's only gonna. I think he's perfect for a Shane Waldron offense. A guy that, that you can get the ball to on every level of the field. Behind the line of scrimmage, at the line of scrimmage, just beyond it. Intermediate routes, down the field. I think he's perfect for Caleb Williams. Again, perfect for Waldron's offense. Um, like He could be like a locket guy for Waldron anytime. He can be a JSN guy for him anytime. I think he's going to be great. You know, so that, That's me. So that, That's got to be their leading guy there. But I'm curious to see how they divide this up. I hope they mix it up. Don't stick to one thing. That'll be key. I'm pretty confident with them in that category. Number two, this will decide a lot for the Chicago Bears, how good they are this year, actually. People talk about offense, offense, offense with the Bears just because Caleb Williams, those receivers, a, a, a fun talking point, I guess. I agree. But does the defense pick up where it left off from last year? Down the stretch, they look pretty damn good. They look pretty damn good down the stretch. They were tough, uh, physical, pretty consistent. It looked like an Eberflus defense, you know, where he, as he started to call the defense – 
and it kind of looked like where he was, where his where his defense was in Indy, which was fantastic. So logic will say they where they were most recently at, which was a good defense, and Eberflus kind of taking over, calling that defense. They should continue to where they left off. They should, uh, and that that'll be big for them because if that if that defense continue, continues to play at where it was, or could it even get better, certainly. Uh, and then the offense takes strides that we expect. Of course, there could be growing pains, but they should be a better, more consistent passing offense with Caleb Williams and the weapons they have. Uh, combine those things, like the defense and that, that is another reason they could be sneaky and make some noise. They're not just a team of the future. They can make some noise early on. But, you know, the reasons it may not pick up where it left off. We didn't see a a ton of games with them playing at that high of a level. It was fairly new, I'd say. So it's not kind of set in stone. That's how they'll play. Even though logic says maybe that'll be how it is that they continue to play where they left off. But uh, they have a great secondary led by Jalen Johnson. It's very well coached back there too. Uh, I like the linebacker group. TJ Edwards was phenomenal last year. Edmund still has upside. We'll talk about him a little bit more in, in a little bit. It's really on the D line. Where the run defense actually went from two years ago to last year, I mean, the jump was insane. So uh, hopefully they continue to where they left off. But the D-line, on paper, it kind of looks like Montez Sweat and some other and some other guys that you're kind of wondering, will they step up or not? They need someone to step up at D-tackle. Billings is a solid nose tackle, really good against the run. It, not really heavily evolved uh, in the passing game. Uh, the the uh, downs, the passing downs, I should say. Um so they need guys to step up. I think they play better than how they look on paper, but in, as important as defensive line is in football for the pass, for the run, uh, that's something to watch for them. So that could decide a lot. Could they kind of go back to where they were on defense? Are they are they a, te- a defense that's going to be a little inconsistent one week? You know, they don't look the same, and then some weeks they look like how they were at the end of last year. If that's the case... Because the offense should be pretty explosive, but it's going to have growing pains, rookie quarterback. So could they be a team where one week offense is on, defense is not? You know, Are they going to have consistency with this young team? So that's kind of the big question there. But if they pick up where they left off, it's another step in making them a sneaky team that can win some football games right now. Number one is the potential for this offensive balance, which could create a tough game plan. I think this is the number one thing that can make them super sneaky and not just a team of the future, but a team that can win right now. Um, And I had this for a couple other teams as well, but they, because of the balance that they potentially could have, it could create a, a nightmare scenario for opposing defenses. You know, in terms of the game, it's it, potentially it's an offense I wouldn't want a game plan for. And that's because they could have everything. You know, first off, Caleb Williams, and what I love, my favorite thing about Caleb Williams is, well, because he had all these Houdini acts with his legs, and I think it kind of programs it in people's brains that he's a scrambler. It's what he is, and he's and he's a pass-first guy, actually. And that's what I, he wants to throw the ball. He wants to find ways to sling the ball, and if he has to run, he can do that. That's my favorite thing about Caleb Williams. And there's some things that people don't like and some things he's probably got to work on, sure. Um, but... That's fantastic, you know, for for him and for the for the Chicago Bears here with the weapons they have in the passing game. So because of Caleb Williams' arm, because of those weapons, they they could be pretty solid in, in the passing game. And they made it a priority to add DeAndre Swift, and you know they they should be able to run the football as well. So they kind of could have a really good balance there. Also, do you have to kind of keep an eye on Caleb Williams? Do you have to kind of spy? Caleb Williams, because if he gets outside the pocket and you got no one out there on him, he's going to take that lane and go. So you create all these different problems where they should have a passing game anywhere on the field because they're receivers, because they're quarterback, because they're tight ends, should have a running game because uh, Caleb Williams himself can run, but because DeAndre Swift and that, that was a priority to them. And then Shane Waldron had a pretty balanced offense in Seattle, ended up having kind of a two-headed monster in the running game last year in Seattle, you know, so... It, all these different ways that they could potentially win. Of course, it has to click the chemistry, and Will, Caleb Williams has to kind of figure it out. You know, his knock was he he did not play the best ball against the better competition uh, in college, and he's gonna be playing. It's the NFL. He's gonna be playing good competition at all, at all times here. Of course, his defense didn't help him out too much at USC, but um, you know, so they have a lot of potential here to be very balanced, which makes a pretty good team, which makes. 
uh, the play caller's job pretty easy. Sometimes play callers get knocked for being too predictable, but sometimes it's not the play caller's fault if they're one-dimensional. If some things just don't work because they don't have the talent there, then they end up being predictable. So if they have that balance, they should be unpredictable, which should cause a tough game plan. And that kind of, the number three kind of goes into that. Uh, mixing it up with the different looks could make them a tough game plan. So they could be sneaky. They could be... Teams probably don't want to deal with them depending on how they look. I definitely think they'll be really good early in the year with this because like going into week one, like how do you sit down and in game plan for this? Like you maybe, I don't know if you watch bears film from last year, you watch Caleb Williams, you watch Shaylen Waldron's offense and he kind of tweaked his offense down the stretch. So they, they could be pretty deadly early on when there's like, no, like what the hell's the game plan here? What do we got to do? So should be fun. Uh, we got players to watch here, not necessarily the best players, but most intriguing players that got to step up, things like that. Went Javon Dexter, uh, and my good buddy Jim agreed with it, that Javon Dexter had to be on here, a longtime Bears fan, uh, because they're asking, I think they're asking a lot of Javon Dexter. Uh, they, they, they let Justin Jones go. They needed someone at D tackle to step. They need someone at D tackle to step up, and Dexter's going to have to be that guy. And, because they, they need someone to step up there, uh, you know, next to early downs next to Billings, but Billings is probably not going to be on the field and passing downs. Um, so you might need multiple guys to step up, but a pretty good prospect out of Florida a year ago. Um, you know, maybe Florida didn't really use him in the right spot. So now is kind of the time for him. He learned for a year to kind of take off and go. And like we talked about uh, def- the defense, Really no questions about the secondary or really the linebackers. It's more so the D-line. So uh, Dexter has to not only fill that role as a starter, but step up and play pretty well for a year or two guy. It could decide a lot. Like it could decide when it comes to uh, things when it comes to run game, but getting after the quarterback as well, um, you know, I'm passing down. So very curious to see where he goes in year two because they're asking a, a little bit, Uh, of him and of course you got to put Caleb Williams on this list uh you know a lot of pressure being a Chicago Bears quarterback I think just because how big the fan base is and the expectations a lot of hype there um and then fields and you know how that ended up and ended up being uh, pretty disappointing I guess underwhelming in in terms of the passing game so um and Caleb Williams actually can make or break this team because we talked about it they could be a balanced they could be sneaky if they're balanced um, offense, you know, if because uh, they have the weapons as well, but if he goes out there and kind of lays an egg, doesn't play that well, then that that can't work. So a lot is on him, but I didn't put him at number one though because it's like, you know, he's a rookie. If if he doesn't play all that great this year, it's not the end of the world. Like we're not saying we're not sitting here and saying like he has to play lights out. Like that that's a little bit too much of expectations here. So. But all eyes on him, if he plays well, if he plays better against better competition, if he gets the ball a little bit quicker, he did have some fumbles, you know, mainly with exchanges on handoffs uh, at USC. Like if he fixed those things, we're kind of watching for those things. But if he fixes them, they, they could be sneaky. They could be very, very deadly. And number one, I'm going to go with the linebacker, actually. I'm going to go. I'm not really worried about the linebacker unit. I think he'll play pretty well, but I'm going to go with Tremaine Edmonds. Uh, who this is his second year on the Chicago Bears time that big contract from the Buffalo Bills but if you were watching us back you know when Tremaine Edmonds was coming out of Virginia Tech if you were watching my draft content you know I was a massive Tremaine Edmonds fan huge Tremaine Edmonds fan but even then I said he might not be great right away this guy has insane upside so like a prototypical type linebacker with you know, the obvious traits that you look for with, you know, with the just freakish playability, like, you know, flashy playability, like he has a future, but it might not come until he's on his second contract. And he's, and he's been good throughout his young career so far, but it's been a little inconsistent, like ups and downs. And even last year, kind of the same thing, thought TJ Edwards was their better linebacker and that for Edmonds' sake, that can't be. Like you have to be that guy, the Chicago Bears. But now we're kind of getting into that time where Edmonds could possibly take off. Like this is even with our prospect evaluation, like like the scouting report. Like this is kind of that time where we're expecting him to go. And I think he has potential. 
And it's weird talking about upside and potential with a guy that's been in the league for a little bit, but he still has that. He has potential to actually be maybe the top linebacker in all of football. So my eyes are on him. He's either going to be like decent and a little inconsistent still, or he's going to take that step and be crazy good, which could really make this Bears defense uh, one of the better ones in football, really. So Because we know they have the secondary. He's got a good linebacker next to him. But those are the three guys that we are watching. Caleb Williams, you know, mainly, I mean, he's the most talked, one of the most talked about players in football right now. So that is a big reason he's there. But Edmonds and Dexter, we're looking what type of strides those guys can make here. Uh, games to watch. Uh, I try to stay away from the divisional games on the for all these because those are obvious. Like, yeah, no shit. Like the divisional games, especially for the Bears, are huge. Uh, with the rival game between the Packers. I think people put them and the Vikings in the same category in the NFC North, so those are massive games. Like the Bears, you kind of view those as, you know, kind of got to take care of business for the Bears. But the Lions, who won, who the team to beat, who won the division last year, the Bears played them very, very well. They actually outplayed them both times. They just won one of them. Um, you know, they, they gave Goff some problems, this defense did. So, um, you know, maybe they're they're that. You know, if they take care of those games, they they can they can help them with be, making some noise early on, being sneaky. It could stop the Lions from winning the division. So those division games are obvious, but I like picking out the the three not so obvious ones. I'm starting in Week One. We did the Titans video already. I had the same thing, and it's kind of rare for me to have Week One as a massive game, like game to watch, but because anything can happen in Week One, but. I viewed the Titans and the Bears as kind of very similar teams. I think people we talked about in the Titans video. I think the people I think people are sleeping on the Titans a little bit. I think these are very similar teams where their nightmare game plans early on, like you don't know what to expect with these, you know, new offenses, new play callers, some new faces in there as well. And they both have potential to be very, very balanced on offense, which kind of creates a game plan problem. And they both should be pretty solid on defense. Um, you know, so I would, before the schedules came out, I was thinking both these teams were kind of in the same boat for me. Like these teams are going to get some sneaky wins in week one because teams aren't going to know how to game plan for them. And boom, they're playing each other in week one. So that should be really fun uh, to see how, how these teams approach that. And it's, I think it's one. It's one of my favorite games of Week One. Should should be a, it should be a lot of fun. We'll see, I could I think it go either way. I think they're pretty similar teams. Uh, and then at Commanders actually in Week Eight, uh, I thought the Bears maybe maybe they're better. One of their better, maybe their best uh, offense performance last year was against the Commanders was at prime time. Um, and uh, it's all different looks here. Uh, but some of the same players. But curious to see how the offense goes in this game. Uh, but a big reason uh, it's on this list is it's right after the bye week. Bye week is in week seven. Uh, and now is that time where the, maybe the Bears, Caleb Williams, a young team, they kind of get some chemistry going and maybe they kind of hit their stride or they start maybe if they're going to be a playoff team, they start going right here. So how do they bounce off the, back off the off the bye week playing a team also with their rookie quarterback and Jaden Daniels? Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels should be a lot of fun there. Um, Cliff Kingsbury uh, is now the OC of the Commanders. Shane Waldron now the OC with the Bears. They, they were in the same division for a bit there. Um, so young, fresh teams, straight off the bye week, uh, you know, for, for, it might be viewed as like a must win for the bears, like playing another young team off the bye week. Now's the time where they get going, maybe go for that playoff push. So I like that one. And then Seattle, uh, in week 17 for multiple reasons. Um, uh, I, I, I think these are the two sneakiest teams in football. I said that. I think the Titans could be up there. I think some other teams could be up there as well. But Seattle, Chicago, I think they'd be fighting for the playoffs around this point. Week 17, the winner of this game very well could make the playoffs. The loser could be out uh, at this this late in the season. Shane Waldron, obviously familiar with the Seahawks. They're familiar with him. So a little bit of a revenge game perhaps there. I think it's going to be a big game down in week 17. So love those games. Uh, you know, for, for the for the Bears, uh, not just the divisional games. And then some fans takes from Twitter. Uh, Anthony Kramer, who is a X slash Twitter subscriber. Uh, how it come together offensively, says not only Caleb Adunze, but Allen Swift and new additions as well. Yeah, we kind of touched on that. Like, how, like are they going to stick to one thing? Are they going to mix it up? Should be interesting. Shane Waldron, how's his offense look like? We talked about kind of tweak things differently for the Seahawks at the end of last year. The Bears have had some struggles with offense coordinators. Um in the past here. So how will that look offense line consistency improvement? I'm glad he brought the offense line up. Cause I did not touch on that yet. 
Um, I, I'm not worried about the offensive line. And, you know, unless they're, like, beat up throughout the year, um, you know, is it the best offensive line in the world? No, but I, I, I think it's a decent offensive line. And I think it, it, it I, people kind of got on a, a little bit too much the recent years. You know, did they allow some pressure on Justin Fields? Yeah, I thought a lot of it was Fields holding on the ball or stepping in the sacks. Um, a little bit too much of that. Uh, offense line, you know, is it going to be, again, is it going to be the best in football? No. Is it going to be the worst? Absolutely not. I think the offense line will be fine. Uh, but yeah, Kill Williams, there's some knocks on him and getting the ball out a little quicker. So we'll see if there's some of the same issues that Fields has. Montez Sweat carrying the defensive, as we talked about, it is it, a possibility that Sweat has, to, you know, on paper, it looks like Sweat has to carry that group. So does somebody to, like the rookie from Kansas, Austin Booker, um, does, does he get a decent share? Does somebody step up? Uh, Booker, limited experience in college, um, but was pretty productive last year. So we'll see what happens. And Tyreek Stevenson, yeah, he's not talked about enough probably. He was very, very solid last year. So him and Jalen Johnson, really good duo. So how does he play in year two? Cameron Sullivan, also an ex-subscriber, appreciate you, who will be receiver one by the end of the year. Uh, I, I talked about it. I think DJ Moore's that guy. And we kind of I like that he added a hot take in with these big questions with the Bears. A hot take at the bottom there. Keenan Allen leads the team in receiving. I could see it. Um, yeah, his uh, his reps from the slot mainly uh, could be an easy target for Caleb Williams. I like DJ Moore, but we will see that it's going to be fun to watch. Um, can this many new faces mesh well? Yeah, uh, that is a big thing for me. Like I said, do they have the chemistry? Does it click? Um, a lot of new faces. Uh, you know, and if they do click, could definitely make that playoff push. Uh, with big signings of both sides of the ball and new OCDC, will they have an offense and defensive identity? Uh, or, yeah, that I kind of talked about. Is it going to be game to game? Will they be on the same page at the same time? Could they have both? So we talked about it. It's the reason why the Bears can make some noise right now. They could be sneaky because they can be pretty solid, balanced and solid on offense, and they can pick up where they left off on defense. If both those happen at the same time, that that's could, could, what what could make them scary, uh, and then some other posts uh, replies from uh, X slash Twitter. Eighth and Shores defense was top three at the end of the year. Any reason for su su success not to continue? Yeah, it's something we touched on big time throughout this video. Uh, they were really good down the stretch. Does it continue? Uh, what's stopping it? I mean, uh, teams game planning more properly because Eberflus kind of took over. Um, you know, so do teams have more of a game plan? Do they kind of get figured out? I'm not saying that's the case. Uh, I'm just answering what uh, what could uh, what would be the reason if they didn't continue, or maybe the defensive defensive line just not there. It's kind of being we talked about carried by one or maybe two guys. So those are the questions there. Um, and then Jacob or Jacoby here uh, he made it pretty obvious he's not a big Bears guy. Uh, but he thinks there'll be a pretty good, uh, a good old ball club this year. Eight wins, um, in, in a top twelve offense. So I guess to find good old ball club, I think that's pretty good for them. But I think some people, maybe some fans in Chicago, some are a little hesitant to buy in because what's happened in the past, and then some think like they're gonna be really sneaky, could win nine, ten games. Um, so maybe they would think they wouldn't think eight is a good old ball club, uh, but. Top 12 offense would be pretty good. A lot of good offense in the NFL. So, yeah, we'll see. I, I think they got, you know, they got to get somewhere between seven to, uh, what am I trying to say? They're For for people not to be disappointed or concerned, I mean, the bottom line is seven wins. If they get seven wins, it's like, I think we're going to be going like, all right, made a step. It's a team of the future anyways, you know. But I do think a lot of people are expecting around eight or nine wins. That would be good as well. Anything better would be spectacular. That'd be, that'd be and it's possible too. Like we talked about, if things so we've been talking about these teams with all these teams in these videos, if these things click, they can be better than expected. They can surprise, um, you know. So we'll see. Bears are definitely a hot topic right now. A team to watch for all the reasons we explained. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, first comment on this video will decide. Which team I do next, so there's probably already a comment by now. But, uh, yeah, check out the playlist full of these videos. More to come, of course. Please like, subscribe. Check out our sponsors and our Twitter pinned in the comments section. Liquid IV, code GOAT for 20% off. Might be a little more around the holidays here or around Father's Day. Every time there's, like, a holiday, they, they do that. So, um, 
yeah, it's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.